Want to see a gorgeous clean and simple card? Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm sharing a very easy card that takes one image from a stamp set and designs a card around it. It's clean, it's simple. It also ran over on the Simon Says Stamp YouTube channel as part of my Easy with CZ series, but I wanted to share it here with you because I love you. I'm gonna say it, it's true. To see that card project, stick around. It's coming up next. Here are the core products I'm going to be using today. I'm gonna to show you how easy it is just to take one element out of a large stamp set and create something really beautiful. I also have the die set so I can cut out what I plan to do. And I just have a few inks here. I have carnation, peachy, and lemonade, as well as a little ultra fine antique gold embossing powder and embossing ink plus some blending brushes. So let me get set up to stamp this piece right here. So I'm going to place this here. Now I wanna make sure that I have enough room to blend over and actually now is where I would need to see the die. I may need a larger piece of paper, but I don't think so. I think if I bring that down like that, I should be good to go space-wise, because that's just it. You gotta make sure that you have enough space to do the whole piece. Pick this up, and I'm just going to prime the stamp a little. When you get a brand new stamp, they do have a coating from the manufacturing process, and of course these stamps just stamp better and better over time, but if it's your first time using it, just go ahead and rub your finger over it until it looks a little cloudy. I will powder this up with some anti-static powder. Okay, and now I will take my clear embossing ink, ink up my stamp. And I'll bring that down and give it a press. This is a press tool that I use just to let me add a little pressure onto the misty door. I'm gonna lift it and I think I'll just do it one more time. My paper hasn't moved, it should be good to go. All right. Now let me get my powder. I'll take our embossing powder here and just sprinkle this on. Okay. And you can see the beautiful veins of the leaf. Ooh, look at that beautiful shine. All right, now I'll get set up to add color. I'm going to be ink blending today on the new stamp and stencil mat. Let's peel this off. This is a sticky mat, which is really great for holding your cardstock in place while you are blending. And it's also nice because this has a little bit of warpage, but the sticky mat holds it nice and flush so that you're not gonna have to worry about that warpage. So let me position my stencil. I'm gonna get these veins lined up. When I press this down, the stencil also sticks to the mat. Now, I am gonna mask off just a little, although I don't think it really matters because I am gonna be cutting this out, but just to protect the cardstock below. These, again, shouldn't matter because it's gonna be cut, but I am an over-adhesor, <laughs> so I... Oh, I like to mask off everything. Just, you know, just mask. You can use post-it notes too. You don't have to be an over adhesor like me. Okay, let's ink blend. I'm going to take my brush that I use for pinks and just clean it really quickly on my paper towel roll. This is the way I clean and it, it works great. And I'll take a little piece of scrap paper here and then I'm just going to load up my brush with carnation. This is gonna be the first color. I think that's gonna be pretty. And now that this is all held into place, I'm just gonna blend. Blend this color 
focusing it a little darker in the center and then fading it out a little lighter like that. Just with the pressure of my brush. And if you have smaller brushes, these are very nice for just staying in a more focused area. All right. And of course the embossing resists the color. Let's move on to the next color and that is peachy. And we'll bring the orange and overlap. Pink into orange is literally my favorite combination in the history of ink blending. I just think it is so gorgeous. Oh, look at that. So again, lighter out on the edge of those leaves. Come in here and just darken that. And I can come in here in the center. And just get that a little darker. Like that. Mm, love it. And again, everything's being held in place. So let's move on to our final color, which is lemonade. These are analogous colors. They sit next to each other on the color wheel as you go around. And when you do this, you know they're going to blend together beautifully in rainbow order. Okay. So we'll finish that at the top. And I'll go a little darker with my yellow small brush right there in the center. Now that my blending is done, I can lift this off and show you how beautiful my leaf is. Isn't that pretty? It's got the shine. It's got a little rainbow blend. All right. And also to remove from these sticky mats, if you just bend the mat like that, right? Let it bend. You can gently take your cardstock off and it will not bend. It's very sticky. But now we can die cut this for our card. The sign that says stamp dies come tabbed and you can bend to break them apart or you can get some snips. I recently picked up a new pair of snips. These are from Hero Arts. And what you do is you just snip right at where they connect. Or again, if you were to break them apart, let's just show you how that works too. You can break them very easily and then you can take your snips, clip on to the side. Well, I gotta clip it right where I hit it here. Clamp and twist and that will get the little nubby pieces off if you don't want those. And then you can just work your way around and clip, clip all the inside out. I have created a little template for my piece because I have worked so hard to get this beautifully blended. I want to position my cutout here to just get a good framing of the piece. And sometimes I'll do this when I've, you know, taken the time to do, you know, a little ink blending and something that's a little fancier. And you can see here that you can position the cutout. This is just some cheap copy paper so that it really nicely frames your piece. Then you can take some tape to hold your paper in place, which is what I'm going to do here like that. I'm even going to tape it to the, oh, I have some tape here to the template or to the plate itself, just so that it holds it in place and it will give me a nice cut. And I think that, I think that will be nice. Then I take my die, I pop it right into, oh, now you gotta be a little gentle there because of that piece, but I'm popping it right into the opening like this. And once it won't move, you know you are lined up in your template and you can tape that into place, okay? So that won't move. Take your cutting plate, pop it on, and now we'll cut this out. Okay, run that through my Gemini Junior. Okay. 
And now when I pop this out, I will have a beautifully cut leaf. Oh, come on, very sticky in there for my card. Isn't that pretty? All right, let me get my greeting ready and then we'll build out the card. Sometimes when I have a beautiful element, I want the simplest of greetings. And I'm going to take something from my reverse foundation sentiment strips and I am going to cut out you are my person and I'm going to be using one of my Simon's stamp sentiment labels and these work perfectly to cut out these greetings without harming the other greetings on the sheet. So you just frame it out, tape into place with some tape that will not tear the paper and again I'll go cut that out. Lift this up. These are well, I can get that tape off there. There we go. And I'll just pop out my little strip and it's perfectly trimmed. I'll take the remaining strips. I keep all of my sentiment strips in these wonderful little pockets from Simon Says Stamp. And then I keep them all together inside one of these. So I have a couple of these actually because I have so many sentiment strips, but they fit perfectly and you can have them all contained in one of these. I like to use my little baby trimmer here, my little mini guillotine, and I will put the last letter right across that little center line and cut, and then flip it and repeat that positioning on the other side, and then I have a perfectly centered greeting, and then this greeting, which is good to go. I am your person that can go right back in the pocket for another card. One more thing I like to do is take a Copic marker. This is T10 and I will take off. Well, let's see, let's get the brush side. I will take this off and then let me show you this. I will color the sides of the sentiment strip because these are black toner ink printed on white cardstock, right? And the reason we call it a reverse is where there is no color, where it appears to be white, that is called a reverse style of type. But what I do is I'll color the sides in so that they look like they are printed on black cardstock. You could also run these through a foiler like a mink with some deco foil, and you can foil these greetings as well. All right, I'm going to get some cardstock and we're gonna finish our card. I recently restocked with the big, the big mama foam roll from Simon Says Stamp. This thing is huge. And I'm gonna go ahead and put foam tape all over the back of my leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and score this. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter. And I will score right at five and a half. Hold that down and give that a nice press with my Teflon bone folder. Okay. And now I will just position this right at a bit of an angle on my note card, just about like that. Just drop that down. So it just has a lovely little float there in the center. Now for this, I am going to put a little liquid glue just so that this has a little float time until I commit to my placement. So I have my T-square here and all I want to do is I just kind of want to have this. I don't know. Yeah, I think I want to have it right. Well, maybe right there. And I'm going to bring my T-square in, butt it up against the side and make sure that's straight. Oh, it's so simple, right? Just an elegant leaf. Let me grab some gold confetti to finish out this card. I've just got five little sequins to finish out this project. So we will add a little liquid glue. Boop. And boop right there. And then a large one here. Boop. The medium size. And boop, 
the small one there. And that's the finished card project. Look at the beautiful shine on that. Also, the, the photo will look a little, my, my camera's making this look a little green, but it's really pretty yellow. And this is just an example of taking one big element from a stamp set, using the coordinating stencil, and adding the simplest of greetings. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find links to all the supplies I used for this card project in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more clean and simple cards, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I will see you in those videos.